<laughs> Hi, I'm Nancy Callen, and I live in Seattle, Washington. I started out working in glass at Massachusetts College of Art. My name is Catherine Gray, and I've been blowing glass for probably 30 plus years. I'm also on a Netflix series called Blown Away, which is a competitive reality glass blowing show. I am the resident evaluator or judge on the show. This piece, tell us how you really feel. Hopefully it's obvious they're like really oversized horns that clowns often use. Um, they are blown glass. We had the opportunity to make these at a residency at the Museum of Glass in Tacoma. Making anything this scale really requires a lot of help and pretty specialized, like larger equipment and facility. Originally, the horn part was actually just clear glass. Um, the bulb was black glass. We went through a few ideas of, do we keep them clear? Do we want them to be more realistic looking? And how do we achieve that? We came up with this, uh, a really thin silver leaf that actually ends up looking like a mirror, which is, uh, which is really amazing. There's also a sound element. Mm -hmm. And one of them, there's a soundtrack of both Nancy and I crying. <laughs> And then in the other one, there's a soundtrack of Nancy and I laughing. <laughs> I think that is reflective of a lot of the pieces in this exhibition where there's both sort of a happy side and a dark side. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, maybe also referencing situations where you don't know whether it's better to laugh or cry as a reaction. And sometimes you do both. It's been a, a rough four years, you know, and, and we made this work uh, within the past four, four, four to five, five years. years. And so there were a lot of things that we as people and artists were dealing with. And so, um, you know, a lot of our feelings came out in this work too. That mirror, that play with the mirror is something that occurs in some of the other pieces as mm -hmm. well. And like the title of the show, The Clown in Me Loves You, and that we were wanting to incorporate both us and the audience and in the work as well. So through reflection, bringing the viewer into the work. I think these pieces are a direct result of what we've lived through the past four, five years from political kind of chaos and turmoil and social unrest and the pandemic and lots of other factors that um, you just feel like all of these things are coming at you and you don't know what is the best way to deal with this. And the so sense of being kind of paralyzed, or like I said earlier, not knowing whether to laugh or cry. I think this is sort of a direct uh, result of the, those kinds of feelings. I grew up in Massachusetts, and in our living room, we had these two paint-by-number clowns that my grandfather made. And um, they were framed, and, you know, I looked at them all the time, and I was, I was a little kid, and I just thought, oh, I just loved these images. And I thought my grandfather was this great painter. And I soon learned that this was actually a paint-by-number kit, and I still loved the pieces, and I still thought he was a great painter. The paint-by-numbers, we thought, made sense with our initial idea of you know, thinking about Venetian clowns and how beautifully crafted they were initially, but they kind of devolved into like less well-made and much more kitschy sort of souvenir objects. Mm -hmm. The idea of the paint by numbers made sense for us. The fact that there was this connection with Nancy's growing up, and I know we had paint by numbers in our family living room or den as well, beautifully framed as if they were like masterpieces, yeah. basically. So technically, there's a bunch of things going on in these pieces. Nancy is an amazing glass blower that uh, a lot of her work really specializes in using these glass canes, the long strands of colored glass to make patterns. 
So it's a subtle backdrop in these pieces, this kind of crisscrossing canes that is kind of a nod to Venetian techniques. Um, but then we started to explore a bunch of techniques that we don't really do that much. You know, in this case, um, these are some enamels, some fired on paints that are on the surface making the clown and the... And the airbrush. And the airbrushing. Yep. Yep. Airbrushing for the mouth. We kind of just wanted it to be a loose sort of smeary look. We didn't really ever think that we wanted to just make three-dimensional glass clowns. No. And But we did want to you know, have some relief or dimensionality to the mm -hmm. pieces. So that was one way to kind of broach that or kind of make something that's two-dimensional somewhat three-dimensional and play with that sense of a wall piece versus sculpture and, you know, what does that mean when something exists out in the space versus on the wall? And these are some art historical questions about like painting versus sculpture, like which is more important. But we're exploring all of that through the motif of clowns, which seems like such a throwaway kind of subject matter. Yeah, exactly. And you you know, you bring up a good subject too, and that's art versus craft. When we put this frame, this ornate frame around the glass craft, it brings it to you, is this art? Is this craft? Mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. And to me there is no question. It's art. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. to me, glass is art. So we're looking at floral glory and this is maybe a good piece to illustrate how we get all these panels. We, you know, we've talked a lot about um, that these are all blown glass, but they don't really look like vessels per se, but they all start as vessels. To create a panel, what you do is blow a glass cylinder. And the cylinder is a pretty large scale, you know, because we need to be able to cut them and open them up. So basically you have, oh, this is a smaller model, but you have a cylinder that has a, a bottom on it. We cut the bottom off of this so you have a tube and then we with a diamond saw we cut along the long way so you have like a an opening like this you do a double cut and then this goes into um, an annealer an oven or a an kiln. oven yeah. yep yep once it gets up to 1200 degrees it'll start to slowly open you have to make sure that it doesn't collapse on itself so you know you have to man the kiln the the oven and keep your eye on it and then um, slowly it opens up like this and you have a flat panel. When we first opened up this panel and saw you know the, the waviness and the proportions then you mean the first thing we thought of was flag and you know again that kind of references you know an American tradition you know how prevalent the flag is in the visual culture here mm -hmm. but lately the flag is used in lots of different ways not all of which we agree with. And the black and the white, I think, talks about sort of the polarization that is in this country right now mm -hmm. with not a lot of gray area. But, you know, we also want to imbue some hope in the scenario. And that's kind of where the flowers come in. And, you know, it's kind of a reference to both kind of 60s pop art, even sort of yeah. the hippie movement in yeah. this sort of sense that you know, as a group, you know, as a community, we can kind of change things. And I mean, in this piece, emoticon, because we still had some like leftover flowers, yep. and we're just kind of playing around with them. Nancy made this arrangement and I was like, oh yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, it and, just... and thinking about like emojis, our phones are so much a part of our lives and how we express ourselves. Right, yeah. and it's, it's kind of the shorthand. And I think yes. that's the same of, you know, a clown face, you know, it's got this sort of mm -hmm. imprinted expression, but it, that never changes. Right now we're going to talk about a few of the sculptural pieces that we have in the show, and that's uh, Roly Poly and The Dreamer. Traditionally, when you first start blowing glass, you work three-dimensionally. So these are much more recognizable as glass objects than, say, the panels are. We love blowing glass, and it's one of the things that we really like to do together. So creating these sculptures, we actually worked in a different way with these two. We worked with enamels and painting on uh, the expressions of the clowns and seeing where that went. They were kind of experimental pieces that we really liked. And we made one at Urban Glass and one at Pittsburgh Glass Center. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And Nancy mentioned we were using enamels for like painting on the glass which is not something either of us really do in our own individual work. And so that's another aspect about this collaboration that has just been really liberating. You know, we've just been trying things we wouldn't normally try. Um, we felt like we just had a lot more kind of artistic license, if you will. Mm -hmm. Maybe we just, you know, took away sort of the kind of expectations that we have for our, our own individual 
work, you know, in the service of these collaborative ideas. So that was really pretty fun to just kind of experiment and play and not really know, like, kind of what we were doing or where things would go. Yeah, yeah. And there, Like Kathy said, there's a lot of pressure when you have your own career and people expect kind of a certain thing from you and it's hard to experiment. And also glass blowing is, is a very expensive artistic form. <laughs> so oftentimes on the back of a clown's head, you'll see like when they... When they, um, you know, lift their head up, they, you get these sort of... Like rolls. Rolls. Kind of yeah. flesh, basically. So we kind of wanted to be true to that. And so both of these pieces, we painted those on, on the back. And also they're sculptures. They're meant to be viewed, you know, three-dimensionally. Mm -hmm. So you, we want the viewer to walk around. And Roly is actually, Roly Poly is actually a kinetic piece. So he's kind of this egg-shaped head and he swivels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of a reference to those punching bags, mm -hmm. those clown-shaped ones. That the do, bozo, the bozo yeah. bopper. Oh, bo that's it. Yeah. yeah, I yeah. have one. <laughs> it's got out a lot of aggression on bozo bopper. <laughs> he is pretty sentimental. He is. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's got this. He's this got a very quietness yeah. about him, and and reflective. Like I think the hat is like a bit of reflection and self-awareness. The Clown in Me Loves You was a turn of phrase that Nancy came up with. We titled the piece first. We have the panel with a rainbow pattern. It seemed obvious to us that it was like rainbowy kind of clown wigs. And then so we made the head that has a mirroring behind it. So it is sort of subtly reflective. Again, kind of bringing the audience into the piece. I grew up Catholic and um, we, had, we had this... Um, banner that said the Jesus in me loves you that always like stuck with me and I always tried to like work that out in my head like what Jesus in me and I think with the clown in this piece that came back to mind and it was like the clown in me because there is there's a clown in all of us you know again it's like this sense of hope like there is there is so much divide and so much... Discord. Yeah, discord going on. There is always something, hopefully, in, in others that we can see and love and, and, like, seeing part of ourselves in others. And that we have the ability to bring joy to others, yeah. each of us as individuals. Being able to see, see yourself in the artwork, I think, was really important to us. This piece, Thoughts and Prayers, kind of came together when we heard about the Ringling Brothers Circus closing down. And we created this pile of horns that are, they're clear glass and they have a, uh, it's called scavo, this kind of um, powdery surface that we can add to the glass and it makes it look kind of antiqued and old. And then we thought about how we would present this work and we created a pedestal that is reminiscent of like the pedestals that were in the circus. They had like these triangles painted on them. And so we kind of took away, we were moved and we just kind of made like a skeleton of what was. Mm -hmm. and, and the horns are like a little bit like ghosts, mm -hmm. you know, because of being just in clear glass. They don't have the same kind of visual weight as they would if they were sort of the real horns. Again, that's, you know, kind of nostalgic. It's sort of bittersweet when the circus kind of closes. I mean, I think as children, we probably had really fond memories of going to the circus, but as adults, there's something that's also kind of horrifying about circuses yeah. and the treatment of people and animals. Mm -hmm. And so maybe it's not, you know, such a bad thing that circuses as we know them don't exist anymore. But there is sort of this longing for that kind of childlike naivete and innocence of yeah. those years. And I feel like that is kind of reflected in the horns um, and the kind of profusion of them. The title is also, you know, a reference to all of the mass killings that happen mm -hmm. in this country and that, you know, everybody's got their, you know, their thoughts and prayers are with you kind of thing. And, you know, there's kind of insufficient um, to deal with you know such tragedy, I feel like, and I think that's something else that we're trying to underline in this piece that 
there's this language that is insufficient for dealing with the facts on hand. Mm -hmm. And I think like with, with all the work, you know, we leave it pretty open-ended. We want people to like bring their own thoughts and ideas to the work and, and what they see in it as well. In this piece, Squirt, we have again a panel, something that started as a cylinder with uh, this zigzaggy, wigwaggy cane pattern on it. But we've also just really kind of isolated, uh, you know, two particular things about clowns, you know, like the crazy patterns mm -hmm. in their clothes yeah. and the flower that will squirt water. And so there's a big clear glass drop of water that's coming out of the flower. And it has such great optics too. That's one thing about glass and, and like working in solids, um, there's a lot of teardrops throughout our work and in these pieces and how the reflections in, in the magnification that happens with that clear glass, we love playing with that. And also this pattern of the wig wag, it kind of also is, to me, is kind of reminiscent of the funhouse mirrors. Mm. You know, you get like this like swoopy pattern. Because the collaboration has been so much fun and we've just gotten so used to being in touch with each other so much about various things that we are always like looking for reasons to kind of keep that going. And so we've been starting to think about the other kinds of work that we each do and figuring out how to collaborate on some of that a little bit more. And you know, Nancy's been doing a lot of like these kind of panels with you know cane and texture, you know, making these kind of collages or quilts of in a way of installations of different sort of uh, patterns on the glass. And I've started developing pieces that have this iridescent coating on them and really trying to figure out how to highlight this that particular process. So now we're trying to figure out we both we both want to get in on each other's thing. Yeah. Because like <laughs> I true. love this iridescence that you're doing. You uh -huh, know, uh -huh. it's just gorgeous. Right now I've been like really interested in this granulare technique, which is like these um well it's kind of nubbiny and very textural. And this iridescence on that will just I think would look yeah, really great. We've so. actually already started. So yeah, yeah, yeah. we did a few tests and we're, I think we're on our way to a new collaborative body of work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.